Welcome back to our McLaren 720 owner's log. In this episode, we're going to be under the skin. Engine bay, cooling, everything else you want to look at. Interested? Keep watching. Hello, welcome back. I'm John Thorne from Thorny Motorsport and welcome to this, our next episode in our McLaren 720 Vlog. Now we've covered things like seats and geometries and some dyno runs as well. And this time we thought we'd follow up uh, one of the videos that we did talking about the car's aerodynamics and its use in terms of airflow to keep the engine cool. Now you'll note a lot of our videos um, really quite different to the other ones on the internet. They seem to be split between the sort of classic YouTuber who will uh, talk all about the, the look of the car and how it feels, etc. And you'll get the other guys who'll be out there just regurgitating McLaren marketing department's statistics. We are more motivated by the technology of the cars. That's what turns us on. And so for us, a lot of what we do is under the skin, uh, hence our car being apart right now. So uh, hopefully this is useful in terms of going underneath because it's sort of trying to show you the bits of the car you wouldn't normally see, but also you know, congratulate McLaren at some of the technological advances that they've done in this particular car. Now, this one we're talking about airflow and how we keep in the engine cool. And the only really way to explain that is to show exactly how it's done, which means taking those things apart. Now, that's not quite as simple as that. We are currently redeveloping our sports exhaust for this model. Uh, we did this two years ago. Uh, but we were always very proud of our 12C650 and sports systems with the crossover design that we've come up with five years ago. And we wanted to make sure we could apply this to the 720, which we've now done. So it's not quite a part just for a video, it's a part to the exhaust side of it, which would be a separate video. I'd also like to say hello to our viewers in Japan. For some reason we have a lot of people, Japanese owners, who are quite interested in what we do technology-wise. So hi to you guys. Hopefully this is useful. This is all the thing we're getting requests for, is this kind of video. So hopefully it's useful. Anyway, so... This our McLaren 720 Spider. It's pretty much apart from the back end. All the panels are off the back, um, mainly to the exhaust, but also to show some of the videos we're going to do now. But here is very useful to understand how and why McLaren use all their airflow into the engine bay. Now, an engine is nothing special, okay? All it does is it mixes air with fuel and sets fire to it to make an explosion, to move the pistons, to move the crank. It's not complicated. Internal combustion engine, the giveaways in the title. Now, that hasn't changed since it's first invented. And the fact of life is that when you're blowing something up, in this case, air and fuel, the only thing that's combustible in the air that we breathe is oxygen. There are other gases in there, but they're all inert, okay? It's the only thing that will set fire if you blow it up is oxygen. Therefore, the higher proportion of oxygen in the air that you have, the bigger the bang, the more power it has in it, more energy in, in the energy it has in it that you obviously convert, by exploding it. Which is why it's quite crucial to keep engines cool, because the colder the air that we breathe, the more oxygen it has in it, proportionally speaking, to the other airflow in it. Now, this is not taking account elevations in terms of heights. This is all about the actual, just the air that, that, that's here in terms of temperature. Colder air has more oxygen. Warmer air has less oxygen. Therefore, hot air, that being used by an engine to explode in the system. I'm not talking about the airflow around the engine, I'm talking about the air actually sucked into the engine that's then exploded to, to burn fuel to move, create power. The colder the air, the better the explosion. Which is why, especially on turbocharged cars, your morning effect. So nice cold summer morning, car feels nice and quick and very responsive. After drive home in the afternoon when it's 25 degrees, it doesn't feel as responsive. That's because it's using warmer air, which has less oxygen to it. And it can be quite a big difference, 20%. So you have, you know, 20 horsepower, 30 horsepower less in the afternoon than you do in the morning. Now, this is crucial because it, it indicates in terms of what McLaren have done in terms of taking the airflow from the front of the car and ramming it into the engine. Now, we learned very quickly with the 12C that McLaren's expertise in aerodynamics is pretty astounding. The 12C on a dyno, very low intake temperatures, and it maximizes huge amounts of power by taking advantage of getting as much air into it as it possibly can, both around the engine bay to keep it cool, into the radiators to keep everything cool, but also in terms of into the intakes. Uh, that extended with the 650, extended again with the Sports Series, but they moved on a country mile with the 720 when it comes to how they're using their airflow around the car to maximize power and maximize cooling at the effect. And part of that is, is really, you know, some of the issues of design. 
I still don't like the headlights. The eyes just don't do it for me. But I understand now why they've done it. I understand what they're trying to do with the airflow. Literally, so much is taken from the front and channeled into the back to make use of. It is a very impressive engineering feat to have. And we thought, let's take it all apart and show people how it works. Okay, first things first. We, we discovered in the dyno video, link up there somewhere, how the airflow around the car is channeled into the back of the car, uh, under the headlights, under the bumper, the doors, for example. Everyone looks at doors as being a design feature with this, with this separate blade. It's not. All that door is designed to do is to get as much airflow from the side of the car. It's called laminar flow, where it comes down the sides of the car and you can literally suck it into corners. And what they do in this example, and the doors here, is that they have generated a huge intake which goes into the radiators to cover it. Now, normally when supercars use bodywork to get the airflow into the back, it's just the bodywork saw that's used. There's various bits of plastic inside to help channel the airflow through. But the 720 is quite different. As much as that, once you take the panels off, you'll find this thing, okay? This is the largest intake panel I've ever seen in a road car, okay? And normally there'd be bodywork to channel the airflow into the radiators. And what McLaren have done, I said, forget all that. Let's make it engineering from exactly what we want to do in terms of airflow into the radiators and then put the skid on top. Quite different. Now this is huge. Well, I've never seen one the size of this and it's also sealed. So the radiators that sit at the back here um, are literally fitted into a cowling and there's no airflow around the sides. And that's quite crucial. If you look at a, a radiator, it's basically a flat piece of metal with grills in it. Air, when it hits it, will bounce off. Okay, and it will seep around it. What you want is the airflow to go through the radiator, through the fins, cool the water that's running through it, to cool the engine. And that's what you see on race cars. You tend not to mount a radiator or an intercooler right to the front of the car. Okay, well, you, some people do it, but they're idiots. What you want to do is fit it as far back as possible and generate a cowling around it so the airflow is sucked into the radiator and sucked through the fins. That's quite crucial. And what McLaren have done is that same thing. The radiators are fitted at a 40 degree angle but the channeling is going straight into it. So all the airflow comes from the front of the car, comes down the side of the doors, into this huge ducting, straight through the radiator, and nothing is wasted. Nothing can seep around the sides. It has to be sucked through the radiator to maximize its efficiency. There's a pair of fans back there as well, and also some flaps that keep the engine warm when there's no movement of airflow over it. It's just yes, quite clearly how well it's working. But it means that all the airflow from the car is being used to keep the car cool, keep the water cool. Very impressive setup, and it's solid, you know. <laughs> the bodywork just sits on top, which is quite interesting to have. So that's a huge intake, and literally it comes down from the door. There's a door aperture, goes straight in, straight into the intake. So it may look like a, a design aspect, it's not. This is about keeping the car cool. Very impressive process. The second aspect of airflow is down to the air being used by the engine in terms of making that explosion to move the pistons up and down. Now that on a turbocharged car means you have to have a filter that sucks the air in, goes into turbo around the system. The problem with that is that you've got to get the air from somewhere, okay? And for the most part, the air has to come from the engine bay. The longer the distance between the intake to the turbo, it generates lag. So you want to have a reasonably short distance, but at the same time, not so close together that you'll get too much heat because turbos do generate thousand degrees of the heat. So you have to keep it separate. Um, that's one Formula One cars now. They're very separate, the turbos is quite separate away from other parts to keep the cool down, to keep it cooling. Um, and I think there'll be some road car elements from Formula One coming from that, hopefully, if ever Formula One again. Now, the crucial thing about here is that the intakes for the turbochargers on the McLaren are right at the back. They're all the way back here, right back here, literally behind the headlights, okay? And that's an odd place to put an intake. If you think you want airflow into them, why are you putting it further back there? And the reason why is that A, there's nowhere else really to put them, but B, you're taking it away from the main heat generator, the turbochargers. Now, with at the back of the car, you notice the whole back of the McLaren is open. You can pretty much see the gearbox, the engine, everything. It's all grilled. There's no bodywork there at all, which isn't great. It doesn't look so good. But what they're looking to have is what's called the take advantage of the air that's going over the back of the engine called stall. Once airflow goes on top of the car, it hits the back and then it rotates round. Okay, it sucks back into the back. That's why you see a lot of hatchback cars have a very dirty uh, trunk boot lid because literally dirt is being sucked off the floor and deposited on the back of the car. That's why saloon cars tend to have less of it, but you'll still have that process. The airflow hits the top, it comes round and it sits at the back. What McLaren are doing is taking advantage of that, that negative air pressure at the back to give a nice basic air that they can suck into the, into the, the, the um, filters. 
into the intakes of the turbos. Now, it's not the best place to put it. Ideally, you want airflow directly into it. But then you have what well, you have a different process where too much air is hitting into the filter and they can't cope. Okay, I think of a ram air effect is where air is sucked into there and then literally forced through. It very rarely works on road cars because it has to be very central to the center point line of the car. Otherwise, you just get bouncing air bouncing off. So putting it at the back where you've got your negative air pressure and that rotation of air is the second best thing. Now, what's very impressive about this is by mounting it further away from the turbos. I mean, they're literally nearly a meter and a half away. That's a hell of a distance in a car of this size, especially the engine bay you've got. It means that air is nice and cool, or as cool as it can be, has a limited amount of time to get warmed up going through to turbos before it starts to get cooked. So that's just two of the areas of the engine bay that <coughs> I'm quite impressed with in terms of airflow. There are some downsides. Um, because of the way it's configured, it does mean the back of the car is completely open. Aesthetically, that's not as pretty as I say a bit of bodywork, but if you're using the airflow at the back for the intakes, you have no choice. You must open up the grills. We did a similar thing with a Vauxhall VXC20, where we have such heat in the engine bay, we actually punch holes across all the bumper and rip them all out to get the airflow out, and it did work. And that's not surprising because a lot of the McLaren uh, design team and engineering team are ex-Lotus. They learned, well, they cut their teeth or certainly learned some process from the VXC20 and the Elises before. Little negative things though, <coughs> the engine bay, <coughs> the ECU for the engine is tucked right in the back corner. Um, Again, it's kept out of the way for heat. That's a good thing. However, if you do get a hit in the corner, you've got a 7,000 pound ECU, it's gonna get mashed, okay? Not so good in terms for a, a crash protection type process, but we see why they've put it there. Um, the exhaust side, which obviously we're developing our, our new one for it now, is nice. It's reasonably high up. Now, this is where it's great fun with, with manufacturers. They don't spend any money on exhaust. They really don't. It seems to be the last thing. They have their budget of X billion to build a car. Then they run out of money and go, ah, crap, best put an exhaust on it. That's why most standard exhausts on most cars, not as a McLaren one, generally are shit. It's just no investment put into them. So from our perspective, we can put a lot more effort into making exhaust on it and to smooth out the airflow, maximize the power, maximize the noise. Now, obviously, from the perspective of manufacturers, Again, they use that opportunity to upsell their sports exhaust, which are better, but still, generally speaking, it's an opportunity for people like us <coughs> to maximize what we can get out of the car. So that's always a useful thing to do. Spider is a bit of a bitch to work on, to be fair. Um, the inspection panel for the top of the engine is done by the scuttle coming up, which is obviously a reasonably ball out process. Um, but other things that we've learned in here as well, which is fantastic, the hinge mechanism for the roof, it's just brilliant. If you actually watch it work, it's the it's, it's most complicated, but most simple process we've seen. And it works perfectly. We very, very rarely hear of roof issues uh, on any of McLaren. Um, the only ones I've heard of is when someone's trying to slam it shut with something in there, or there's been an electrical problem that they've then tried to bypass. Mechanically, they very rarely go wrong. I've only heard of a few. And the, you know, the, the speed it takes this roof up and down is pretty impressive. But you look at the actual hinge mechanism, uh, it's great. The actual working function is wonderful. Um, it does make things like inspection, for example, awkward, um, you know, to check your oil on these things. Uh, it's not easy on a spider. You've got to remove a panel. You know, in today's wonderful world where people want things done very simply for them, it's not so easy. But that's the downside of having what we have in these cars. Um, suspension, all these bits. I've gone through this a few times in the past. Um, and I'm going to do a special video on the suspension rather than going through it now. Needless to say, um, unfortunately, we have a leaking shock on our car that supposedly we've replaced already. So we're on our second shock on the rear corner of the car, which is not so great. <coughs> um, uh, I'll go through in terms of how that works. That's a separate video, a separate series of videos, frankly, because the suspension is so sophisticated and works so well. But for the purpose of the rest of the engine bay, it is, it is reasonably hard to work on because in typical Lotus style, or ex-Lotus style, they've made it for a function rather than make it for maintenance. So for example, to take, to do the exhaust, both side panels have to come off. And I think we're up to around about 90 different clips have to be replaced, uh, have to be removed and put, and put back in, which is time consuming. Uh, the bodywork is very clipped on in that regard. You know, we'll live with it, but from a design point of view, from a BMW perspective, they would have it removed in one big item, just to keep the servicing costs low. The clown don't build cars to take into account servicing, they build for, for the performance side of it. So we get that. Um, that's pretty much it for this one. Um, we've got some, <coughs> we'll try and get some more video over the different bits inside of it. And as we go through more on the car, we'll do some more. Next video will probably be about our exhausts, um, both full systems and cats and also the cat back systems. And also we will uh, do some work on the suspension and let you know until that works as well. 
but hopefully that's useful. Hope it's interesting. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, please, again, any comments, please do ask. And again, do hit the subscribe button um, to get the next video up. But hopefully it's useful for you. All right. Thanks for watching. Cheers.